three, two, one, and we're live. I'm joined by Yeri, um, a good buddy of mine, hand balancer extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Tell us a bit about yourself, Yeri. What does you do? What do I do? Um, right now I coach gymnastics and I am uh, starting my own project called Ever Evolving, where I teach um, what I've been doing like since I'm like maybe 12 or 13. So martial arts stuff, um, breathing, meditation, lately a lot of hand balancing and a lot of people call me like a hand balancer but I think uh, I'm not such a good hand balancer, I just started like a few years ago and it's what I'm doing the most but it's, it's not the only thing I do no. so I suppose maybe about also like about all the stuff that I also do no just, just part of the picture like not only hand balancing yeah <laughs> yeah talk to like a few people who like that right? it's like Oh, you're a hand balancer. Like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's, like, it's just one thing I do. Yeah. I did a lot. Like, do, for yeah. the past, like, one year, like, a year and a half or two years, I've been doing hand balancing, like, every week. Mm-hmm. More than 10 hours, like, weekly training. You did, like, more when you started, or you kind of more now, or? I'm doing more now, because when I started, <clears throat> well, I got tired, like, easier. Like, I, I was getting tired, like, quicker, so I couldn't you know, train as much on my hands. So I, I was more doing more like accessory exercises, compression, stretching, and other exercises. And as I got better, and I started working towards a warm hands, which requires a lot of volume, mm-hmm. it might, like at least to me, yeah. <laughs> some people might get it quicker. Um, yeah, I started like training more and more and more. Um, Crazy mutants might get it quicker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's the same with hands sounds like, I mean, I always try to explain to people it's not like an exercise you know you can't just like bang out a lot of reps and be like yeah I'm gonna get better at it it's like it's such a skill like you have to understand it hmm. it's um one of the things I explain at the camp like it's mm-hmm. something some things are like training or you're training for something and some things are a practice and, and hand balancing I think is a practice to me yeah. because it like it contains like so many things that you need to work also in order to get what you want and See, when you said that, I was like, it's so true, but at the same time, it's like, your training at the beginning should be a practice, like, you should really focus on mastering whatever it is, even if it's like bicep curls, just get really damn good and make sure every time you sit down to do them, that they're going to be perfect, because then you can just do them, mm-hmm. whereas like, some people never really put that effort in, <laughs> just shit the entire time, which happens so much to people, like, I think, it's one thing I always say, like, people, especially when it comes to hands hands and hand balancing like I've seen so many people spend years trying to do it and you just like just go and ask someone like <laughs> find a coach and do it I mean that's why I'm uh, breaking news people I'm getting Yuri to <laughs> my new coach because um, yeah I mean every good coach I know they have a coach mm-hmm. even all my coaches who have trained with over the years they all have their own coach because you're never going to be 100% like honest in your own training you're always going to train at the stuff that you're like really good at or just avoid the shit that you know you should do but don't want to I always say that uh, unless you you know you're gonna live forever you better find like a teacher for whatever you want to practice or, or learn because they will save you a lot of time and no maybe not a lot of mistakes because you still will do them mm-hmm. but maybe you won't be I don't know I, I was wrong in so many things that I've practiced on my own and then when I was so by a teacher the way it was done I was like oh wow like I wouldn't like figure it out on my own because I was so like stubborn on what I what I thought it was right, yeah. and then it wasn't. So I mean that happened to me with you. <laughs> you just sound like oh your head position's off when I was doing hand stands. You know you saw a video of it, and straight away I was like oh yeah he's right. <laughs> like I fixed it. It's like massive improvement, but it was just like I knew there was something going wrong and I had an idea that that was it. But I was just like how do I fix this? And he's like oh it's wrong. I was like oh okay. <laughs> like it can be stuff. Like really as simple as that that's why it's so important like obviously uh, it's a bit biased two coaches saying like you should have a coach <laughs> <laughs> yeah as you say like, it'll save so much time just having someone to go like fix this yeah it's so not, not only like also like time and then like if you get like a really bad habit and you get it into you it's really hard to like forget it yeah. or learn the skill probably so you know, as long as you can play with something without, like, getting, I don't know, like, 
I don't know how to explain it, but like if you <laughs> if you get into something and you're too sure about it and you keep practicing like for years that thing yeah. and then you get it wrong, like forgetting that or like learning the thing the way it's supposed to be done, mm-hmm. sometimes it could be like almost impossible. It was like you were saying, like we were chatting about martial arts earlier, like we both done martial arts since we were kids and you know, it's one thing that you see, I suppose you probably had it when you moved into kickboxing where you know, you move into a style and let's say like you've never done leg kicks yeah and you're like oh i don't want to train leg kicks and someone just keeps kicking their legs off you <laughs> it's just like i should probably fix this <laughs> like straight away and you're stuck in the habit like oh, i don't want to do this like i'm really good at this other stuff yeah it's like no i need to fix this <laughs> otherwise it's gonna wreck me um and yeah you see that so much and i suppose in martial arts in general like people come from one style and they're like oh this is how it should be that's that's actually a really good point and I also force myself to do stuff that I'm not good at it, mm-hmm. that I'm not good at at all. Like, like I don't think I'm talented at anything, and I know I need to work like a certain amount of hours for some things. But I also I usually force myself to do something that I really dislike to just like make sure that I can put a, like make a big effort to get what I want to. Mm-hmm. And so, like you say, martial arts. Like some people like a lot of striking, and they wouldn't like wrestling or jiu-jitsu, but yeah then they want to become MMA fighters, like, how? <laughs> yeah, I hear that so much in clubs. Like, people are like, ah, oh, I'm just going to focus on my strike and then I'll just work on takedown defense or something. Like, Have you never seen the UFC? You've got to prove this in UFC 1 if you're going to get taken down. It's going to be bad news for you. But I think it is. It's just you kind of feed the ego. You just have to accept that you're going to be really crap at stuff when you start. And I kind of make a point of that. Like, I've, I only really trained, started training properly when I was, like, 20. <clears throat> like everything like I couldn't even touch my knees I was that inflexible when I first started training oh, wow. and then people were like oh you were just always flexible I was like no I just worked really fucking hard to get good at this stuff <laughs> and I'm not even that good <laughs> like, but you just have to accept like yeah I'll be really shit when I start but you have to be yeah and, and also it's not you're gonna be really bad at whatever you do the first time or whatever you can do but if it doesn't take that long to like learn yeah. it does but if you're patient enough then like it, it, it's actually worth it yeah but and it's then, like, like any skill I mean if you that maybe first year you're not going to be great at it but once you get past that like year and if you're really you know consistent with it then your training's going to improve hugely like. mm-hmm. it does yeah with the uh, hand balancing for example like you actually need to do it like uh, it is no other way yeah <laughs> like the one I'm hands and like I I balance on my like on my on one hand and fingers or like one finger or my arm extended to the mm-hmm. side for like weeks and sometimes months trying to like tip my hand off the floor and like take it off on and off and and I couldn't just do it sorry it's hay fever about to kick in all the sneeze um, yeah, yeah so like, like it's staying on track sometimes it's just yeah. horrible like it's you get desperate you're like when is that gonna be over like where can, when can I leave my hand or like do a proper one-arm hands on or like I had the exact same like I when I um, injured my wrist I got really into head balancing of all things I just wanted to be stay upside down um, and I've started working on like the norm um, headstand but it's kind of the, I guess it's kind of the same feeling that like I can hold you know with one finger on each side for ages yeah but as soon as you start to take those off and actually practice the balance it's just completely different <laughs> Your body's just like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, it's that you have a really like interesting teaching background as well. Because you don't come from, I know you teach gymnastics, but you're not like I really like how you teach because you're not a very strict. I suppose it's, I don't want to shit on gymnastics teachers, but some of the gymnastics teachers I've met have been very like, you must do it this way. This is the way it's always done in gymnastics. This is the style. Whereas for you, I suppose you have quite a mixed background so. yeah I've, I've also met like lots of gymnastics coaches because I work at like I, I did gymnastics too for a couple of years and I competed not to like a really high standard but I did it and and I met loads of coaches and and I'm lucky now that I have a really good mentor Stas high Stas <laughs> <laughs> and and most of the high level or high performance coaches that I met that I've met they're really good being strict enough and like flexible enough with the gymnasts and the, and the people that they teach because they know they cannot reverse the, the skill instead of working towards the skill so they see the big picture and they try to go 
from there backwards into where, where whoever is there coaching is at that moment and then some things sometimes they let you do things badly for a long time until you figure it out yourself mm -hmm. like especially like flips and stuff like that it's so quick that you can tell someone to extend the hips or do whatever they want with their legs or their shoulders when not whatever they want but whatever the thing that they are supposed to do but to figure it out that in half a second moving really fast is really hard so the more they practice and the the better awareness you get the better you're gonna get so like um, I'm, I'm a big fan of that so it's better to do it badly first and then do it better if you have someone that, that can lead you don't do it bad, badly always if you can <laughs> you know I guess it's like you were saying like with hand balancing that you kind of just need to do it and you will kind of make those same mistakes but like I guess a good example would be if you're completely new to handstands and someone says I don't know uh, hollow in your handstand yeah then someone has no idea either what that means or how to do it or they know how to do it but they have no idea how to do it when they're upside down like you could keep saying it to them all year but they, yeah, can, or they some, just have to keep practicing until mm, they figure it out yeah there's, there's like various examples of you need to open your shoulders or, mm. or have like really good like shoulder flexion but there's a lot of also professional hand balances that can't fully like open the shoulders like completely and they can still like do skills that are like years away from me right now um so it's not like there's only one way and then you you know yourself like everyone is different and for mobility and your hips when you're trying for media splits and it's really interesting in seeing where you know where everyone fits in whichever they, they practice and they do yeah like I, I'm a, I've been a huge fan of history I was kind of explained to you earlier mm -hmm. um, and always like I'm always amazed by a lot of the old time strongmen and some of that like that was a big part of their training was hand balancing and to see like the what would be considered by everyone nowadays like shit form that these guys have like, <laughs> for doing like you know legs together one arm handstands but you know their like arm was like, out in front almost <laughs> like it was not behind them or straight overhead and you're just like hell does the guy even hold them <laughs> just fucking sheer determination and strength thing. I say so yeah and they could find balance there yeah and there's a lot of um yeah, not only hand balancing, like in acrobatics and all that, they teach you. This is the way that you do whatever, a backflip or... And then you see the, the guys doing intriguing and then yeah. making up their own variations and things that at first don't make sense when you see them. Mm -hmm. But if you see them like no, like a normal speed, you're like, what happened there? <laughs> you know, and then you see them in slow motion and what they do, like the way they block their hips and they lift their chest before they set up and everything, it's better than some like tumbling people and and gymnasts for sure um, yeah like it's one thing I always see in parkour where people will say like oh is that like an aerial and say oh like, do you do a gymnastics aerial or a tricking aerial it's like I know to people who don't know that's like a cartwheel with no hands but yeah I mean like it's the same move but it's done completely differently in those two styles mm, it is yeah I think it's yeah it's kind of it's like another great thing with that man with you as a, a teacher that you're like you're open to showing people that sort of stuff mm. and all that just like no you must do this <laughs> and you're just like but why I just do what works which is I mean it sucks to to like I had a few teachers who were kind of like that where like you must do it this way and you yeah. see people who just struggle for years at times like I try always to wh whoever I, I am teaching to, to find the the most optimal challenge for them mm. and sometimes if they're like beginners beginners so they've never done what they what we're practicing that day like i have people that i teach adults like gymnastics and acrobatics and they've never done a car wheel and to me if they can get their legs around even like if they are like an inch off the floor and they can start getting that movement around their hands like getting their hands stopped to the floor and moving their legs around to me that's just a win like for one day and then as they get confident they get their legs higher and higher and but sure, if they've never done a handstand or a cowboy and you ask them to do like a proper one, they're gonna fall on their face or freak out in the middle yeah. and crash, and then they'll get scared and they'll never do it. So that's the thing with like so many of those moves, like like handstands and cowboys and stuff. They're not like there isn't a massive amount of strength you need for them. It's just fear for most people. Mm -hmm. It is fear, yeah. It's a lot of momentum and and technique mostly. Like a lot of my friends that do tricky, they they're actually like really really weak. Yeah. Or like really stiff but the stuff that they can do is just amazing mm -hmm. 
So when I hear people like saying, unless you have full middle split, you cannot do this, unless you can fully open your shoulders or have like complete shoulder, flex, shoulder flexion, you cannot do handstands and na, 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 na. Like I can't buy it because I have proof that yes. a lot of people are really stiff or really weak or both even, and they can still do like amazing stuff. As long as they can go through the pattern without injuring themselves and and moving well, like and fast, is that's that's pretty much all you need. Yeah, someone's saying that to you, and they look at Instagram, and you're like, but that guy. <laughs> look at this guy. <laughs> yeah, there's so many guys like that as well. Like I, I do not recommend people to just do stuff or, like I, I love, <laughs> like arts and mm. and you know aesthetics and shapes. So when I do stuff, I like. I like seeing myself doing the things as nice as I can and doing whatever shape I like or if I do kicks in when I do tricking or acrobatics I like seeing my body straight or bent or twisted depending on the skills that I'm doing I, I know the way I like to to look like you know the way I like to look so I work towards that and that's also the way I like integrate stretching and mobility in my training it's more like I want to stretch this part of my body or being flexible this way so I can do this skill or I can make this skill look really good more than just like I, I, like, I like people that like mobility and stretching they just do it but I like doing it because I have a skill that I want to work towards too which I think that's uh, one thing I ask people a lot, a lot so a big part of what I've been teaching over the past few years is flexibility and mobility for people and so many people just say that to you like oh, oh I want to get flexible you're like what does that mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Like, oh, just flex or whatever. You're like, but what is it you want to do? Like, people like you are so much easier to teach because it's like, oh, I want to get my middle splits. So they go, like, okay, let's do that. Whereas, like, if you don't have a goal, it's very easy to just, like, do it a little bit and then just stop because it's like, why am I doing this? Hmm. I think it's a big thing, like, for any style of training that you kind of have a goal and be like, right, I got to do this and stick to it. Um, flexibility is a massive one for that yeah I know some people that really like training it and they do it because they love it and like I understand it and I really like people doing it if, if that's what they want to do but I've heard a lot of people saying like if you have your splits or if you have your head to toe and stuff like that you're gonna be better at martial arts better at dancing better at tricking better at acrobatics you're gonna be more ready to do this this is and that but it actually doesn't work because if you haven't built the patterns that you that you're trying to to replicate when you move and all that, it doesn't matter that you can do full box splits. You know, mm-hmm. you can do the widest horse stance and and all that, and then you go to a ballet class, yeah. <laughs> and everyone's gonna like be a hundred times better than you. Yeah. Or you can be really flexible on your hips and and do all the crazy exercises and end of range of motion and stuff, and then you go to jiu jitsu. And the stiffest guy is gonna like make you tap the mass yeah. all the time. So yeah. yeah, I mean, like I've had the guy I used to train who was crazy, like how inflexible he was. Like couldn't touch like his mid chin, never mind his toes. <laughs> Maybe about half a foot shorter than me, but like a pro kickboxer, but he kicked me in the head from cold. And he just like doesn't really make sense, <laughs> <laughs> but you're just like yeah, because he's just trained that skill. Like his body knows how to do that. And he doesn't have flexibility at all, but. You know, it's, you need to like work on the skill and then work on improving that skill. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that I've seen in a lot of different communities where people like, I don't know, I suppose as a coach, it's kind of your job to see it, but I see a lot of people where they train, let's the kickboxer, for example, but now they don't want to do it on the outside of it to help improve it. So, you know, they don't want to do the flexibility or the strength work or whatever. Yeah. You're just like, you're, you're right. And not like you need to focus on that skill. Like these things will also help. Or I think kind of what you're saying is that some people just focus on all the accessory stuff rather than exactly, actually yeah. doing the skill that they're trying to do, which mm-hmm. I see a lot of as well. Yeah, like one don't justify the other. Yeah. Like you can be really good at skill, like my friends that do tricky, most of them, mm-hmm. and still be like quite weak and stiff. Yeah. And then you can be like really flexible and loose and strong, but then you can move. Like you, you, you can run faster than someone that practice running or dance or which is quite hard <laughs> tricking and and all that I think that's also like a good um, kind of like like thing to point to with people as well that like 
especially tricking is a big one where you see a lot of guys get into it young they don't do anything else rather than just go out and trick like four or five mm -hmm. times a week and then they get injured and like it's and then usually they stop or like the injury kind of gets worse because they don't do it and they fix it but then like you look at guys and I know this is kind of an extreme example but look at a guy like Juju Mufu yeah he's a massive dude but I mean, he's in his 30s now and he can still trick he can and, yeah and he's a massive massive guy but you look at that you're like yeah shit like, <laughs> but you know he does all the other stuff too and he built that tricking base obviously like you focus on the skills first and then do you know, the stuff to get strong but like you know his body's kind of able to hold up to that yeah yeah he's big like yeah. really really big <laughs> like yeah people should check him out if you don't know he is um because you have a guy who's like almost 300 pounds but can or just pure muscle but can still <laughs> do like crazy tricking like flips and twists and everything else in between and clarence kennedy oh clarence is actually yeah. really really good yeah he's actually really good at tricking yeah he's and started to put up a lot more stuff this summer and it's incredible and the olympic way lifting like he's he's one of the best in the world for sure like yeah if anyone wants to see a proper like just the perfect form astagrass back squat that's the man to look at that's the man yeah that's fucking insane <laughs> harry squatter yeah if anyone knows clarence get my touch i'd love to chat to that man <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's yeah it is something that you see in a lot of stuff um it's probably like the only thing that i've seen with parkour and the one kind of thing that i really want to help those guys with is that like you have guys who want to train and kind of like especially in ireland half the year you can't really do much training but they don't really bother doing anything else and you have guys that pick up some crazy injuries and then never do anything to fix it or help improve it i guess you can see it in martial arts a bit too like speaking of which what uh martial arts i know you did kung fu when you were when i was like 12 work. yeah started with my dad and, and his teacher i found out like out of nowhere that my dad did kung fu and i didn't know so he he stopped when i was born never told you when you were younger hmm? you just didn't say when you were a child no when i was like months or before i was two mm. he used to like make me do like patterns and stuff yeah. and i have like videos doing it and then after i was two or two and a half he stopped doing that so i kind of forget that <laughs> and then when i was like 11 or 12 i was watching like tapes and i was like that's me doing patterns and that's my dad doing like you know the wall flip yeah. like running against the wall and doing like yes. a backflip i was like how come like never seen you doing that i didn't know you you were doing kung fu and he had like tapes also teaching people and where we live in, in a little village and then we kind of started like doing it just in my in my garage nice. and then his teacher got back he was away somewhere i don't know where but he got back to close to where we live and we started training with him a little and it was it was, it was really good it wasn't like like fighting wise it wasn't useful i'd say but like it, it, i think it made me like really strong mentally mm -hmm. like it was a lot of they push you a lot um, long sets long holds a lot of um, aerobic stuff that you just get out of breath and if you can control your breath you panic and then you get tired and you cannot keep on going and you want to cry and leave mm -hmm. and but if you get through that, it's, it's quite cool. And th I think that's what helped me to get into the gymnastics team that I was. Yeah. Because I got a test <clears throat> in June and then they gave me conditioning and stuff that I had to do for September. And because I was just so into Kung Fu, which was like long trainings and long sets and stuff like that, I just got the, the strength and stuff that I had to get during the summer. Like I got it within the first month. I would try like three or four <laughs> hours every day just doing like pull-ups and chin-ups and hands and push-ups against the wall and stuff like that yeah. and then when I got to the desk it was I said well I, I can do it now <laughs> <laughs> no problem dude yeah. yeah I was very skinny too like and, yeah. and I had loads of time like I was 14 I think when I got into nice. into gymnastics so that's a brilliant age to like get into it as well mm. I suppose bit old by some gymnastics standards yeah. but. well it was like I started at 14 and then when I was 15 my coach was like ah, you need to specialize like you can't do shit on rings or pommel horse so <laughs> I think floor and vault is your thing you know <laughs> which I loved like yeah, yeah. It's, it's my they're my favorite pieces but yeah so I had to <laughs> choose Just pick one <laughs> yeah yeah fuck that's a weird thing with gymnastics as well like I yeah another thing I wanted to talk about um I stopped training when I was 18 until I was 20. 
because I had a surgery on my leg oh, right. and on my scene and they touch a nerve that, that controls my, my ankle and my toes mm. and then I lose my foot. Oh, right. So like, uh, from training six uh, times a week, sometimes twice a day, uh, like gymnastics and then doing, I was living in a residence, so I moved to the city. I got a little scholarship. So I, I have people that did boxing there and musicians and dancers like around my age. So I go hang around with really good people and, and learn from them too. But when I got the surgery, I lose my, my foot and my dose. So the first nine months I couldn't do anything. Uh, just I had my foot strapped so I wouldn't like trip over <laughs> but I couldn't jump or run or, or the acrobatics and then after nine months it started like to wake up I changed physios and I I, f I found like two really cool guys <laughs> and I still bath in a physio and they, and they found out like what to do with my leg so I go back they're not the same yet mm -hmm. it's been six years now and they are not the same yeah. but I can I can do pretty much everything I was doing until then. I can feel like my right foot is a bit weaker than my left. Yeah. But I probably can do a lot of the stuff that people can't, Yeah. you know? I can like flash gainer onto my right foot and- yeah, Stuff I can't do. <laughs> and do like, you know, a lot of flips that I like, I land on my right leg and, yeah. and sometimes I land heavy because I big run or whatever and I don't hurt myself or anything. So I'm quite happy. Nice. But between both legs, I can, I'm, al I'm always aware that one is a bit weaker than the other. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and those two years were like hard. Right? Yeah, I'd say, man. Like, I had the same when I broke my wrist. And it was just like. But yeah, and I was like really getting the hand bounce on that stage, and that happened. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> I want to do this stuff. Probably the same for you. You've like really gotten into acrobatics, and then. Yeah, I was just doing tumbling every day, all day. That would, like, I would train and then go with my friends to the beach and keep like tumbling on the sand and nice. stuff like that. And then it was like, okay, it's over now. Yeah, it's done. And the doctor said, like, I don't think you're gonna move your foot again. And I was like, oof, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, not so, no hope for him anyway. But I can, I can move my leg. So yeah. I'm quite happy. <laughs> good use of it now. No? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like pretty much anyone I've ever trained. Like, the, as much as you'd like to think both limbs are the same, whether it's arms or legs, like, there's always one that's different to the other. Hmm. Like I dislocated my left hip like, a good few years ago. Right. Um, just kind of like popped in and out and throwing a kick like um I think it's still just different different <laughs> yeah it's like I don't really know how to like put it into words but like it just feels different the whole time hmm. ever since like um nothing or pain or anything it's just different <laughs> yeah I think it's a bit of an uh, like utopian idea like being like completely yeah. balanced like your heart is on one side so your lung is smaller and then you have organs on the other side and so it's kind of like, quite balanced but the, the idea is really cool yeah. and, and I love it but it's kind of like it's good to strive for perfection but yeah, yeah. whether if you're gonna get there or not it's a, that's something I say to people train all, all the time because it's like it's that exact thing like, I mean you you can train to try to do things perfectly all the time but you're better off just doing what you can do and then trying to improve that it's kind of like what you're saying with the handstand like it's better to get up and balance a banana than it is to like keep trying to do a perfect one and never even get up and practice with it. Yeah, if you're lacking like some stuff to do like the most beautiful handsome that you could do or you don't have a coach. <laughs> yeah. Try find one first. Yeah. And then if your coach tells you to do a bit of a banana in your handsome then listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was funny because when I met Juval, which was the first hand balancing workshop I've done he the first thing he told me like oh your handstand is good it's like good for gymnastics and I was like hmm and like he said well hand balancing is not that good mm. and I thought hmm it's different isn't it he was like oh yeah it's quite different and then when he's playing all the little details and what I was doing instead of so the handstand that I was doing compared to the hand balancing that he was trying to teach me it was quite different and I could train longer because <laughs> the hand balancing one is quite more relaxed than the one I was doing. Yeah. The one I was doing is like getting ready to tumble or to do giants. So like swinging with your body straight around yeah. the bar, going Super through hands up. Solid body. Yeah. Super solid, yeah. yeah. Like really stiff, like strong, like squeezing my core a lot, which I don't do that now. I just <laughs> relax, my do relax my dummy when I do handstands and trying to use my bone structure more than my muscles and my strength. 
Yeah, so. So, so I remember someone saying to me, I forget who it was, it was a good hand, hand balancer, but I remember they gave me the example of like when you first learn handstands, and it's kind of like why everyone goes so red faced when they do them. <laughs> Where it's like if you imagine you had like a light on like your head and your chest and your tummy and your legs like that when you first start doing hands like everything's like flashing red like everything's lit up and then it's like the better you get the more you can turn off so all eventually right. you can just turn them all off and be like water in you while you're in it that's a good idea huh? <laughs> yeah it's like yeah, that makes a lot of sense because like you see it like i always jokingly say to people that like the easiest people to teach handstands to or i don't know if you'd agree but what i've seen is that like the weaker people are usually much easier to teach oh yeah because like strong people either they, they tense too much they rely too much on their muscle or like they get up into one and kind of like bend their arms and then just like squeeze everything <laughs> tie her out in like 10 seconds Whereas yeah like I think really so yeah yeah loose people they when like weaker people they, they usually lose her yeah so it's easier to like manipulate them to get them into the shape and <laughs> like jelly yeah kind of like they let you do it like strong people sometimes they close their hips and you're pulling their legs <laughs> and they're pulling against you and yeah, they, like, then you both fall and <laughs> yeah yeah it's a it's such a fucking mad art like and it is um, like, the circus way of hand balancing as well was so so different like I've only met a handful of circus people who train in that way but any time that I've had to like show like uh, straddle hand stands there's a friend of mine she was working on it and just couldn't get it mm-hmm. it was just because she kept trying to do it with like strict gymnastic form but you know the hips rolled forward right I was like you're never going to get that <laughs> <laughs> you just need to you need to twerk <laughs> you need to twerk yeah yeah I think Yara would now agree after I showed him some middle split stuff I was like twerking is the most important skill you'll ever learn <laughs> yeah and I'm trying my best now I reckon you get it I reckon you get it soon <laughs> it's um, yeah it was interesting talking to, to David about it um, that like I mean, he sees it firsthand in his clinic so much, but I'm sure you see it teaching people that like the ability to move your hips. It's just so many people have no idea how to do it. Yeah, it's quite restrictive. So. Yeah. Hmm. Well, actually, um, some of the guys I had on for podcast, I think the last podcast I did, um, the Co Connection guys, and they were saying that like in South America, that was like the first time that they ever managed to loosen their hips because <laughs> they, they were just dancing the entire time. All right. every night they go out and dance and like women be like forcing them to move their hips <laughs> they're like okay I do this <laughs> yeah but hips are also like quite complex like yeah you can turn your femur in so many ways when you do a geek for example yeah. or if you turn your hip into a geek or if you just do like a press to handstand or a handstand or a Mexican handstand or acrobatics mm-hmm. like what I teach people a lot is moving their hips like really fast <laughs> yeah but that's what I, when I teach like backflips, for example, or the top backs, they call them in Ireland. <laughs> what I teach people is how to like jump as you raise your hips. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people don't understand that the lowest point when you do a back tuck or a backflip is your hips. Because once you tuck your legs in your chest and you hold them, your tailbone is pointing at the floor. Your legs are on top of your chest and your head and shoulders are more or less at the same height of your, of your hips. So I see a lot of people rotating really slow because they try to raise their chest All right. and then <laughs> like they almost face plant if they don't face plant or a webster or backflip <laughs> <laughs> well they go backwards so much because they don't leave their hips in front they just throw themselves back, to the back. <laughs> which is fine too like mm-hmm. when you learn so depends, you learn going backwards on the surface, so I guess. <laughs> no yeah but, but if you learn like to do some to do somewhere flat mm-hmm. and you go backwards and you arch a lot and all that it's fine because the more confident you get the more you can play and you start getting like a really nice feeling on your feet and you know which part of your feet you use to push mm-hmm. and then if you well if you pay attention if you don't you just do it like that always <laughs> <laughs> but if you do pay attention you know how much you straight your knees how do you move your hips your shoulders how do you spot with your eyes like that's really important too if you look up behind if you look in front which is the way I like the most to you know do that really high backflip <laughs> It's quite interesting, like hips are yeah, a lot so of power coming from your hips, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think this is why your, your butt's your biggest muscle group in the body, like. It generates so much force, like. Um, Attention. Yeah. But it's kind of like what, like what you were touching on there is something that it was first kind of laid out for me pretty well, like the GMB guys, that they kind of have like the big three 
in you know when you're teaching the movement where it's you know motor control strength and there's a must uh, flexibility uh, one must uh, the kung fu is bad <coughs> <laughs> yes it's motor control flexibility and strength and i think like some people well most people that you see in gyms anyhow they just work on strength they don't bother with anything else yeah and you see like like everything you just listed there is like motor control motor control <laughs> motor control like get this stuff down yeah that, that's what i like promoting the most motor yeah. control like learning patterns and moving through those patterns whatever they are mm-hmm. but it's um i think it's the most important thing and then you can see like in olympic weightlifting if you have a really good coach i did it for a few months with a guy from belarus <laughs> and and he wouldn't let us use weight <laughs> yeah he we were doing like body weight stuff like sprints mm-hmm. long jumps high jumps jumping upstairs and one like single leg squats and stuff like that and then doing only the technique with a really weight like yeah. light light part like really really light and then they teach kids that way too yeah. so as they get bigger and stronger just because they have the technique so refined and it's so like accurate mm. whenever they put weight if they are strong they can lift their weight yeah like my I uh, did the Irish weightlifting cert like the Olympic weightlifting one and I did like a few lessons over in Capital Strength it's a weight, Irish weight, or Olympic weightlifting gym across the road there mm-hmm. probably one of the best ones in Dublin but um, it was like one of the most humbling training sessions I've ever done because it was like just training bar which I think is like 10 kilos and then like 5 kilos on the bar so like 2 big 2.5 two kilo training plates each side <laughs> and that was it that was all I lifted for like an hour and I came out of it like I couldn't lift my arms up like I went to the shop to buy something and I had to like use one arm to lift the other arm to put stuff on the counter and then there was a girl um, and I mean a girl she was maybe 10 training with me and I was having to like take weight off the bar and, and like put it like put extra weight on for her right. you know, <laughs> that like you know I was taking her weights off and it was like you know maybe two extra kilos or something <laughs> and it was just so humbling like she's just amazing form like, like what you're saying you know you just focus on getting that form down I want to control that pattern yeah yeah I think it was actually something that I wanted to say because we kind of touched on it earlier that like it was one thing that I learned in that course as well that I found fascinating that like I suppose you've probably seen it teaching kids and they explain like you know for certain ages right, when you go through growth spurts like your mind control goes to shit because you've got a whole new body to learn in basically uh-huh. and I was I was kind of I've, I've been wondering for a while like is that different with taller people <laughs> you, you grow so much more but I think it's probably just well I say for myself and for a lot of people it's just you don't do anything in your teens like when you need to work on motor control the most it's probably when you're sitting at home playing video games or yeah doing stupid so. shit I think because um, it happened to me when I um, when I got the surgery because I stopped for two years like flat I, I just I was kind of depressed and I wouldn't do any exercise at all so mm. I just learned music in the meantime which also saved my character my my thoughts into training later nice. um, but in those two years I I was 18 to 20 so I grew up like maybe 6 or 7 centimeters in two years and I also got heavier as mm-hmm. because I grew up and because I lost strength and all that when I actually could move my foot and I went to do flips and stuff I knew how to do them but it felt so weird like you couldn't believe it like it was a brand new body for me mm-hmm. I was taller a little heavy I wasn't as strong as fast my muscle twitch was kind of gone and then I could do the stuff but like really badly and I felt so bad like it's like not learning again it was even more annoying because in my head I go through the movements in the air and what I have to do and all that and then when I do it it doesn't work and it was like what's going on here like how is this happening like it's so bad <laughs> like it was like the feeling is horrendous like uh, you can't believe it imagine I don't know you wake up tomorrow morning and then you're gonna go make some coffee and you don't know how to like press down the French <laughs> the French press it's something like that yeah. something like I've been doing that for like four or five years non-stop like every day of the week non-stop and I stopped for two years and because I grew up a little or I got heavier weaker then I couldn't do it like at all he's just changed and he's like nope this is me now yeah and it was really scary as well so yeah Yeah. because once I got back I I was coaching in the meantime 
but I did I did no flips or anything. And and then when I go back, I was just playing with my friends, like doing some tricking in, on sand on, at the beach. Mm. And it was really weird because it's a bit harder on the at this you know on sand yeah. and and it got crazy. Yeah. He, I don't know. I don't want to remember that feeling again. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to keep on going now that I'm kind of fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like, I had a kind of... Ah, oh, that's... Sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I just went from one, because I did that when I was 18 to 20, but when you're a teenager, if you stop, what happens is that you grow up so much in that yeah. short amount of time, that when you get to an adult age, you're like all <laughs> uncoordinated and Lanky, let's, is it lanky <laughs> the word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lanky, um, <laughs> and it's so hard to like learn stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's man. so bad. Like, in, if you're 14, like from 14 to 18, you grow so much and you, your body changes so much that if you don't move it at all, yeah. when you get to 18 or 19, you're like. Like, I only grew between the age of 12 and now, <laughs> I only grew three inches. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, like by the age of 12, I was six foot two. Whoa. So, yeah, like I went through a crazy spread like really quick um because i remember like really bad growing pains but i also remember like i went from like being able to not move well but like understanding how my body works it's just like just a completely new thing around me it's just, like how do i move this and then just not doing sports or any activities really and it was like i almost feel like i'm in my teens now <laughs> i'm actually like moving and doing stuff and my body's actually like okay here's how i like do this thing and here's how i turn that way and Still gotta get some flips now, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to like relearn stuff. Is it? I don't know if this will get picked up on the the audio, but there's a helicopter I think like right overhead right now. So apologies if we do. Think he's going right? I'm not sure. It's the wonders of living on Cork Street. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it is fucking crazy. Like, I think it's. I think it can be really off-putting for adults trying to learn any sort of physical skill that like they've been so uncoordinated for so long that you really have to like teach your whole body like a whole new language almost yeah You're like alright how do we do this shit hmm. it's, it's a I think that you know you have to have someone that wants to learn mm-hmm. and then, then the right coach I have a guy now I'll post a video soon because he's getting really really good at handstands nice. I think he's 64 sweet and um, and he's doing like huge, huge progress. And but he really wants to learn. So like seventy percent of the of the success is him. You know, just trying over and over and over and coming to my class. He never misses a class. And if he can come twice a week, he'll come twice a week. About whatever I tell him to do, he will do it. So I taught him like I broke. I had to break down the, um, you know, the kick to Hansen, the way to get into the Hansen, like in so many bits, so many little parts that it was also challenging for me. I haven't broken in so many parts before. But he would get like each part. Like each session he get like two or three parts and he got like into half hands and so one leg is pointing up the sky to the sky and the other one is pointing to the way like backwards, let's say. Legs open and then from there like to close legs. It was also like a little bit of a challenge because keeping one leg still as the other one comes up is yeah, it's not you know easy. It's, it's not easy when you're upside down and if you never don't Hansons before or, or with a teacher anyway um, so yeah like adults if, if they really want to learn and they find the right coach they, they can learn but they really need to be consistent and yeah. and want it yeah the people that come to my adult sessions like gymnastics and acrobatics they some of them are really like resilient and and they know they're not doing well at all but they keep on coming and they keep on coming and I tell them like if you keep doing that a little longer and then you get this next step and this next step you know, you're gonna learn how to do a front somersault or a backflip or or a handstand or whatever they are trying to learn, and they actually do. And when they stay long enough, like everyone is different, obviously. Yeah, and I'd say um, like I wonder, does it like the older you get, does that end up getting more awkward? Like I know it was one of the fellow GMB coaches when you said that he's he mid to late sixties, um, but never done handstands, and now he's like got solid handstands, got on push up <laughs> it's like oh. so impressive to see because I mean that's I suppose probably for the both of us that like we come from a kind of martial arts background so we're used to stuff taking a long ass time <laughs> to try <laughs> get good at like, yeah. 
um, like that's one thing I always say to people with jiu-jitsu it's like you know you're talking if you're quick like 10 years to get a black belt you know it's not a it's a long long road like and a lot of martial arts are like that you know even whatever one you choose it's going to take you a good few years before you get anywhere in it really like um, and that's like my the book I always reference to people is one by uh, Sal Ibero. Um, I think it's Jiu Jitsu University but like the first chapter he has it divided into each belt in the first chapter it's white belt it's just called survival <laughs> <laughs> that like, is actually so yeah, true yeah such a perfect like, example because <laughs> you say to people it's like right you're basically going to do this thing you're going to have no idea how to do it and you're just going to have to survive it until you eventually figure it out <laughs> and I think that's kind of true of like any physical activity you take up especially when you're older yeah that you just kind of have to bear with it and survive until you get to the other side of it and you get a bit of understanding of like okay here's how I do this shit I think it's um, I think it's quite like beautiful like the feeling that you get out of learning skills when you're older like I know when I went to gymnastics I was 14 so when I learned how to do a backflip like I still have that feeling I remember the place I, were, I was yes. and how many times I did it that day because the day I got it I did like maybe 300 times no yeah, stop yeah. I was so excited, yeah. But I remember having friends that they were doing it since they were like six or seven, mm-hmm. and they learned it when they were so so young that they couldn't, re- they don't have that feeling. Mm-hmm. And I think that also makes me, because I understand the way I have to work for it or do it. When I get someone that doesn't get the skills easy, I can break it down in more steps, and I understand the skill yeah. and it will be better. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of find that as well. Like, I mean, I like I say that most of the at least the uh, fitness side of things that I've learned is really even since I was 20 like so I mean I've had to learn them as an adult and a very uncoordinated one so it's like you know, I've had to like I had someone I was training the other week and they couldn't crawl like you know hands and knees mm-hmm. so I had to like really break down every single little bit and explain like alright this hand goes there that hand goes there this goes like that and I think for a lot of coaches they kind of struggle with that because it's like I've always been able to do that why can't you do that yeah and then I just get frustrated rather than being like, all right, why can't, why can't they do that? <laughs> Let's figure out a way that they can do it. Yeah, I think I'm like quite bad at pretty much everything I do. <laughs> like, yeah, I can do like flips and stuff, but I... Yeah, you know, some compl- people, like I would look at you and go like, damn, yeah, he's good at that shit. <laughs> yeah, like most people think I'm good, but like I always look up to, you know, to like yeah. people that make a living out of performing and stuff. For sure. And I'm like, yeah. What I do, most people don't do, but actually, the proper way is what these guys do. And <laughs> so because I, I, I have to sometimes be patient or take a long, long time to learn skills and break it down differently. I think coaching, it doesn't, like I'm really patient coach. Yeah. Like I teach people sometimes how to do a full row. And I have to like build a slope with mats because they're so scared that they're going to like crash on their heads and stuff. Yeah. Or learning... um kicking into hands and sometimes people are so scared that mm. they actually want to bend their arms and fall yeah, and like I have to actually like them. grab them and pick them up so they don't fall and they don't get scared so yeah like <laughs> coaching if you like coaching like we do <laughs> <laughs> patience 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 yeah, that, that's that's all you need and but it's also and you, you that's, have to ask that of the person you're training to like, yeah you have to patience to you but you also have to do your own training like. Hmm. Yeah, and like like I said before, like you have to find that optimal challenge for that person. Yeah. Like whatever they can achieve in that session, you have to work towards that. Yeah. That's the art. Then if you someone. if you are too cocky or you think you're better than you that you actually are, you set up a goal that is not the goal that that person <laughs> needs, you know. Yeah. And if you're too soft and you don't push them at all, they're gonna get bored and they're not gonna get any progress yeah. out of the training. So that I think that's the tricky bit, like finding the optimal challenge for everyone that's like your art of being a good coach right? I say so yeah because I mean even like you know no two people will want the same thing and they might have you know, lifestyle might be different or background might be different hmm. and that's like that's the thing of a good coach I mean you really have to treat the person not to you know if someone's like oh, I want to get a hands on for example it's because we both do <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know if they're I don't know really tall or really short or really you know really strong or not you know you're gonna it's gonna be completely different how you're gonna teach each of those people like 
Mm. The move's still the same, but the way you go about teaching those people. Yeah, it's different, different, yeah. And I like also, um, <clears throat> I have people with really uh, like tight hamstrings, right? Mm. And then the way they reach the floor is different to someone that is really loose in their hamstrings. Yeah. People with a lot of strength on the shoulders blade, so they can like really round, you know, do like, um, yeah, like, what is it called? Um, protract their scapula. And then as they kick, they push the floor really nice and they go straight straight away. Some people are really weak there. Mm -hmm. So like finding for whatever session you're teaching, what they can do best that they or improve is, is, is what your duty yeah. <laughs> is. Um, so, yeah. you know, that, that makes a difference between how far you place your hands from your foot and like little details that if you just, if you're like a dictator and you're like, no, this is the way and that's the way it's done. <laughs> but you might find like a few people that you can teach but you are not going to be a good coach for as many people as you can yeah. um, if people want to learn it's fair that they find a good coach if they don't want this it's another thing but sure. if you have someone that wants to it's your duty to find a way for them yeah yeah I mean it's like the example I give to people going to coaches or you know if anyone's like oh what should I look for in a coach or what is like if you're not happy with them, even if they've been amazing to you for however long and you're just like not happy with the training, you feel you need something different, just go to something different. Mm -hmm. Like I say to the people that I've trained, because it's like, I use the example of like going to a restaurant. Like if you kept going to a restaurant every night and you got served really shitty food, yeah, <laughs> you, you'd stop going. <laughs> I don't know why people do that with trainers. They're like, why do you keep going to this guy? So you yeah. don't like him, you don't enjoy it, you're not getting anywhere. It's like, oh, it's just... Uh, it's a weird sense of loyalty to the person yeah and the other way it works also if you have someone like really talented or that wants to work on something that you don't know how to teach or you think you're not the best person to teach you mm -hmm. can tell them go to this or that guy mm -hmm. and like I'm used to it because in gymnastics whichever like I work with this guy with Stas he's my mentor now mm -hmm. he's been for three years and he taught me a lot of biomechanics and he changed my sporting technique yes. for bars and floor and vault like you know, I have bad habits, as I, as I said before in the podcast, um, and he fixed those and, and told me the, his way, which is the proper way, I say. Yeah. He's the most efficient, uh, I don't hurt myself, spotting, the, spotting people, and, and it feels easy, so it must be way better. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I have that all the time, because when I have like kids that are really good, and I coach them, let's say, for a year, when they get to a certain level, he has like the elite group in my gym, so I have to s voluntarily accept that he's gonna take that key with him. Mm -hmm. Like I work with him most days of the week, and sometimes we train together, my group and his group that we have, like competitive. But I know that that gymnast that I wanted to develop, like he could do a lot of progress with me, but he'd be or she'd be better off with him. And like saying, okay, Stas, there you have a new yeah. <laughs> gymnast. And losing that, like, it, it is hard. Or sometimes you just have to do it. It's better for, for that person. Yeah, I mean, it sucks. So a lot of people ask me, I don't know, I was doing, like, weights in the gym, like, Olympic weightlifting and stuff, like, front squats, mm. overhead squats. He was asking me to, to teach him, and I was like, <laughs> I know nothing about this. Yeah. <laughs> I know very little, and I'm doing, like, very little progress, and I don't practice as often, I don't research, I, I, I haven't trained that. And I say, why don't you why, why don't you go like to an Olympic weightlifting like gym and then it's like oh but you're really flexible and I like you know your form is really good and this and that and I'm like okay it is but I've never thought this yeah. so if you wanna be my rat lab yeah. lab rat what is it lab rat yeah. I'll teach you or if you really want to learn find an Olympic weightlifting gym where they actually teach people properly and go there don't waste your time with me on this <laughs> if you want something else maybe but this. Nah, <laughs> no chance. Like, yeah, I do you have to accept people. it. Like, and it's like, it's not the best model as a business to be like, oh, go to that guy instead of me. But like, if you're a good coach, you have to do it. Like, I've done that with a few people where it's like, all right, you know, you need to go train with this person to get good at whatever that skill is. Because hmm. it's like I can only offer so many things. And I mean, I know the two of us have quite broad backgrounds, and I suppose we both kind of get known for, like anyone, if you get good at certain things, you get known for them. But like. You know, when you have a a broad background, like doing weightlifting, someone will come and see you do it, and they're like, oh, show me that. And you're like, no. <laughs> like, you know, I don't have the three or four years to invest in to get in, like, <laughs> like a basic level of understanding of this before I even then start to teach it. 
and like you know if you're t- much better off just being like no go to this person they'll show you how to do it and that's kind of why I started this podcast and why I started the kind of seeking out all the movers around Dublin and Ireland I guess is that like there's such an amazing community in this country but we don't know each other yeah, yeah. like actually because I met you I met a lot of other people yeah. like that though I saw you doing handstands in the parkour job and I was like I gotta talk to this guy <laughs> and I gotta talk to you and I was like people need to meet him <laughs> Yeah, it was the same. I met, um, I don't know, I think I met Pierre because of you, mm. I think, and... Shout out to Pierre, little beast. Yeah, and Danny, um, this guy that does jiu-jitsu, that came to the camp, um, yeah, and a, a lot of cool people that also, like, that they do similar stuff that I do, or you do, um, yeah. or even the same stuff sometimes, and... Yeah, even some really different And stuff. I didn't even know that they exist, and, and it's really cool to have, you know, to, to be closer in the community and, mm-hmm. and know each other. Yeah, it's a big thing here. Like I suppose, maybe you're Spanish, but <laughs> it's some one thing that seems to happen in Ireland a lot is a lot of people don't kind of accept that they're good at what they do. Mm. It's like a, I suppose it's a hard one to do as a coach because if you're a good coach, you always have that show shin mindset. Like you know, you're always I'm a beginner. I always have yeah. something more to learn. <laughs> that you're never like oh I'm amazing and stuff. But then sometimes you see someone who's saying they're amazing and you're like okay, doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> And then you're like, oh, no, maybe I am a decent coach or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a really awkward thing, I suppose. At least I found it very awkward to like self promote. Like, no, I'm a good teacher, I'm good at whatever. But Ireland's such a, a small community and there's some really awesome people here. And it's yeah. kind of just being like, look, this guy does stuff and he really like what you do. And that person would like what you do. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I did this podcast and why I had you on. So <laughs> it's a great idea. Like, uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Like, thank you for coming on. But yeah, it's a great place to wrap up. Um, like when you let people know how to find you, well, you can go to my brand new website. Oh, hey. It's not finished, but you can have a look. It's called everevolvingteaching.com. My Facebook page is Ever Evolving, and on Instagram, I, I just I just use my own profile because um, I set it up as a teacher um, tutor. Uh, account so it's a uh, Jedi MB which is Y E or A Y M B and yeah you can find me there and you can ask questions and that's a Spanish we can theory for anyone who <laughs> <laughs> meet up for training or, or do cool stuff yeah excellent I'll put loads of links and everything in the description in the video and all that um, absolute pleasure here thank you so much great well it was my pleasure thank you <laughs>